Now, we come to E and G. So, so far we've covered air spaces around uh, tower controlled airports only. That was the B, C, and D. But the airspace all around those is E and G. Now, typically, E is controlled airspace and G is uncontrolled airspace. And you'll notice that G is typically low level. It's usually found below either 1,200 feet AGL or 700 feet AGL. I'm going to explain that in just a second. Most often, it doesn't go any higher than 1,200 feet AGL, so it's pretty low level. But there are places where the class G can go up as high, and that's what this drawing is trying to show us here, maybe not such a great way, that class G can top out at 14,500 MSL. Now, where does it do that? Well, typically, you would find areas that G goes upward above 1,200 feet over mountainous areas like the Rockies or Sierra Nevadas, and they'll depict that on the chart as to how high it does, in fact, go. Well, let's take a look at this because this kind of airspace, E and G, when we start talking about this, people start uh, scratching their heads a little bit because it is a little bit confusing, especially if you haven't looked at it for a little while. I think the right place to start is just sort of with a, a default, you know, what is the average airspace look like between G and E? And then we can talk about the exceptions, exceptions to the rule and so forth. So I, here's how I want you to think of it. Think of G for ground because it's typically on the ground, ground based. So from ground up, we'll find class G. Again, where we're not in a B or C or D, we're very likely uh, going to be in G. Now there's an exception to that. That's why I said very likely but it's not as common. So typically, class G will be where you start. And G will go up to 1,200 feet typically, on average. And I'm going to have some exceptions to this, but just start with this rule and you'll do better, I think. Above 1,200, you're in E or echo airspace. Now, we'll talk about in just a minute, like we did with the other airspaces, what does this all mean? What does it matter if I'm in E or G? Is there communications requirements or is there weather? What, what, what do I have to do to maintain the, the, the regulations in these airspaces? We're going to cover that, but I will preface this by saying it's all about weather, and that's it. There's no communications requirement for VFR pilots in E or G, even though you can reach uh, a controller in those airspaces. But um, it's a, just a weather requirement airspace alone. So G to 1200 and E above 1200. Now, here's the exceptions to the rule. Where you see these magenta, sort of translucent, sort of feathered, faded uh, circles, typically around airports. And this, uh, we can tell you from looking at the color of the airport itself, is a non-towered airport, meaning it does not have a control tower. This is a self-announced area where pilots will get on a common traffic advisory frequency and broadcast their position and their intentions and let every other pilot on that frequency for that airport know what, what, where they are and what they're going to do. And if there's any conflicts or issues with sequencing or spacing, the pilots will talk to each other. Okay, So they act sort of like the control tower. There's more of these non-towered airports uh, throughout the United States than there are control towered airports. So uh, you'll more than likely, if you haven't already, you'll be encountering a lot of non-towered uh, airports. Most of the time, there are these magenta uh, shaded areas around the airport. Now be careful that's the same color as a Class Charlie but Class Charlie was a dark you know thinner line and it had two rings a 5 and a 10 and so it looked very different than this. What this is about is in these areas inside the circle the floor of Class Echo E airspace pushes down to 700 feet. So going back to our previous we typically find that changeover altitude at 1200 feet between G and E. Now it's really the same thing. G is on the ground going up, but it ends at 700 feet and that's where class echo takes over. So inside of this area we really just need to think 700 feet and outside this area 1200 feet. So if you were a pilot taking off from this airport you would be taking off in class G airspace after you pass 700 feet you would now be in class E airspace. If you were a seaplane pilot flying your float plane off of this lake here which sounds like a great idea uh, you would be taking off into G airspace. 
So the same thing. But you wouldn't cross over into E on your climb out until you reach 1,200 feet. So if you can get your brain wrapped around that, that is some of the hardest part about E and G and just remembering what these circles mean. And there's just some more examples of, of a sectional chart where we can see some various airspaces, uh, the ones we just talked about, where we got the 700 foot floors all inside these magenta circles. Notice all the way uh, around in a circular sense around uh, non-towered airports. There is one airport out here that is not in that area and it's easy to try to uh, say that this is class G out here uh, and, um, and inside the circles is class E. It'd be nice if it was one or the other but G is in here and G is out here and E is in here and E is out here. The difference is 700 feet inside or 1200 feet outside and that's what you need to keep straight and that is probably the most common uh, mistake with E and G airspace. Now, just as a sort of a, another look at it in a 3D model sense, we would have maybe seen a, uh, this would be perfect if there was a runway right here, an airport, because typically that class E, which is represented by the purple here, goes down to 700 feet inside the magenta circles and pops up to 1,200 feet outside that area. So again, below these altitudes would be class G and above would be class E. Now, that leads me to the next sort of uh, exception to the rule. Here is an example where class E does go all the way down and extends to the surface. So there is no class G. We have eliminated class G. Where class E goes all the way down to the ground and eliminates entirely the class golf airspace is where you have a dashed magenta circle. Again, we see here a magenta airport, which tells me it's a non-towered airport. Uh, because towered airports are blue always but this airspace uh, around this airport with the dash magenta tells me that class echo goes all the way down to the ground and eliminates class G altogether. What that's going to do is that's going to increase the weather criteria or the weather restrictions in this area because E minimums are usually higher than G minimums in terms of weather. And that might be because this is a busier non-towered airport with maybe a lot of instrument traffic as well as VFR traffic and they're trying to protect pilots with uh, better weather uh, minimums. So if we were to go and move outward here to talk about the floor of E, we would say surface inside here, 700 feet inside here, and outside there, 1200. So surface, 700, 1200. Now we get to what does this all mean? First I got to look at the chart and be able to uh, determine what airspace am I in, E or G. Now what we do is we say well what altitude am I at in E or in G and we plug into uh, the weather graphs or charts to find out what is the requirement because the only requirement to maintain in those airspaces is uh, weather criteria. So let's take a look at class E. Class E, if you're below 10,000 feet MSL, is three statute miles visibility. That sounds familiar. 500 below clouds, 1,000 feet above clouds, and 2,000 feet horizontal. Now, if we get above 10,000 feet, and I assume we got some mountains maybe we're dealing with, and hopefully some we're carrying some oxygen, aviators breathing oxygen with us, then notice the minimums go up to five statute miles. You almost double the visibility requirement. You double the distance below the cloud, the cloud above is the same, and you more than double the horizontal distance because now it's one statute mile. Instead of 2,000 feet, it's now one horizontal mile away from the clouds. The idea here really is that once you're above 10,000 feet, you're out of the speed restriction. And the 250 knot restriction below 10,000 feet is no more. So if planes are moving faster, and they're usually bigger, faster aircraft up that high anyway. So they'll be coming out of that cloud with a little bit more momentum and you need to have a little bit more visibility to to see and react. So that's class E, pretty straightforward, but it's something that you do have to commit to memory, not only for the written test, but also for your practical test, uh, your check ride with the FAA. This, All these weather minimums that we've talked about so far come from the regulations in part 91. 
the regulations are divided up into different parts and 61 is all about certification and 91 is all about operating rules and so this is found in 91.155 and it looks just like this if you have your your uh, FARs now in class G I specifically saved that for, for last the best for last because this one is a little bit more complicated as you can see it takes up the whole half a page to talk about it 